but it is also the balance overall defensively that has created such a tight structure both forward and back for the third best defensive unit in all of MLS. So this is the good news. You have options moving into the back three, and we've seen them do it this season. Most recently against LAFC and against DC United, both draws 1-1-1. One one one. And get themselves into the postseason here tonight. From Toyota, we invite you to turn off the world and turn on the game. We are playing for big three points in the Western Conference. It's FC Dallas and the San Jose Earthquakes, two of the oldest clubs in Major League Soccer in their 72nd all-time meeting. And kept in play by Christian Espinoza. A dozen goals and a dozen assists on the season. Whipped across by Yule, and it's an only goal for the visitors. Excellent delivery from the skipper Jackson Yule and poked home by Jeremy Abobasi for his 10th of the season. And the Earthquakes in a must-win situation to get into the postseason have the early lead inside of three minutes. San Jose Earthquakes and Lucha Gonzalez just talked about that. When we start to push forward, what does that balance look like underneath? Well, the good news is he doesn't have to worry about it because of the rotation by Jackson Yule. As he stretches here, the main focus, everybody turns to the corner. They forget about the runner right at the top of the six. It's a beautiful move. But clean football here from the home side. It goes back for Ferreira. Paul Ariola trying to flick it across. Velasco, and it's saved by Danielle. Ibiaga up for the header, along with Jeremy Obobasi, and FC Dallas able to win the free kick. Look for a moment like Philip Dujic might reach for a card here. Instead, we'll initially check on Sebastian Ibiaga. One of the best teams in Major League Soccer with their ability to contort themselves to find a way to get a result. Espinoza contorting his body to get a shot away, and had the interest of Martin Poss, and it flies over the crossbar. Jackson Ewell switching the point of attack for Acapo. San Jose grooving again. Espinoza going for goal and Pass had to parry it away. In tune and really breaking down the defense in a hurry. And the problem you're going to run into, though, is if you're San Jose, is, as well as it's done, stretching wide. The career year that two strikes from the MVP candidate on the ball right now. Espinoza. A couple back for Espinoza. Grueso, and it's off the bar. Flatten out the midfield. They've lacked some depth. And so as they've moved forward, not enough options. It's a really good job that cannot be understated, the advancement by Grueso. But watch his body back the entire way. Well, that will all be discussed at halftime as Philip Dujic signals for just that. Jeremy Abobasi got the scoring started in the third minute, his 10th of the year. As Philip Dujic gets the second half officially underway from Toyota Stadium, Tyler Terrence along with the ex-German pro Devin Kerr. As it stands, the San Jose Earthquakes in seventh place in the Western Conference table. Cutting inside, wants an avenue to pull the trigger. Instead leaves it for Tumasi. Ferreira. Clever ball, Ariola on the first time, and he skies it. In the first half, at least towards the tail end of it for FC Dallas, San Jose have tempered their expectations at the start of the second half. They've dropped deeper. It's that flat four once again, and same response. You're keeping this flank, the left side, quiet with Marco Farfan as they continue to advance further and further up that left-hand side. You have to drop deeper and commit more over there on the right. That brings more numbers in the middle and opportunities for space. Ferreira for Obreon, and there's the equalizer! Finally, Dallas have their breakthrough. And a clean finish at that from Hader Obreon as the Colombian makes it 1-1. Play with tactics any way you want. This is how it plays out. Just said, Farfan comes high. As you go, you have to drop a little bit deeper on the right-hand flank, and especially when Ferreira then comes down into the false nine position and you commit numbers forward. Well, where does the second and third run come from? Jackson Yule came off of that run on the right to try and chase. That allowed Pomacall to pinch off. The ball in behind, and the next thing you know, it's that X factor. A capo. Just sandwiched in between three different defenders for FC Dallas. And there's going to be a card issued here. And that goes to Sebastian Ibiaga. Stanford product and three-time national champion. Got down at the exact right moment. Pomacall with the repress and now unloads.
Ariola. Now Ferreira on the turn. Surveying his options, finds one in Velasco. Farfan! They're pounding on the door. You want to get nitpicky here. All it really is is the touch, to be honest, because side to side, Ariella holds the run on the backside. That right there. If you really wanted to, you could step through this first time. The problem is, is Velasco, it's getting very, very tight in terms of trying to break that down because they do everything else right. What a press. Ferreira. Jesus Ferreira straight into the hands of Danielle. Can't complete the 10-yard pass for Montero. Velasco makes a man miss and still going. It's a 3v1 if Dallas play it correctly. Velasco slides it across. It's Ferreira and he skied it. Well, the numbers game that they've been playing has been Ferreira dropping a little bit deeper. They've boxed the midfield and the two high lines come from O'Brien and Paul Ariola that stretch the width. But as you start to play through here, Velasco is everything. Watch him drag the runner with him. You make the center back commit. Ferreira. One initially and parried off the line by Danielle and smothered by the Brazilian as well. He wanted to get a little bit more on this though. And it's difficult because in traffic, watch him lower this shoulder. He has to pivot his body so much. He can't get the full amount of force he wants. Still a great header. It's down, it's away from the goalkeeper. And Danielle, he recognizes that he's not going to be able to get everything he wants in it either. And that's going to do it full time here in North Texas. Both teams will have to wait another day to see what their playoff fate is going to be in 2023.